Shabbat Shalom to friends that are not fair weather friends. You're not around just when I take you around the Galilee and visit the Aliyah Return Center and, and everything's all uh, fair weather. These, this is stormy weather and uh, things are happening. I'm usually up almost all the night, almost every night doing missions, dismantling the encampments of the enemy, the infrastructure of the Hamas and Islamic Jihad and so on, uh, doing a lot of mobilization. And uh, we are in hard times. We're in times where the prayer warriors got to arise. Uh, two Iranian officials were quoted by the New York Times that said Iran is ready for full high alert for full war. And they've decided to directly attack Israel. Okay. And they said they're retaliating for this alleged Israeli strike in Syria, near that embassy, but not on the embassy, where the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps member, including that top, top guy, Mohammed Reza. Meanwhile, U.S. is also saying they're preparing for attacks by Iran on, on all American and Israeli assets. Could be embassies, it could be bases, it could be, they gotta be on high vigilance. Israel, they said, don't go rush the stores, don't go rush the ATMs, but that's already happening to get food in preparation for all this. I'm convinced we're dealing with a very bad principality for the spiritual ones out there called the Prince of Persia. Read Daniel chapter 10. But really pray for this uprising. A friend of mine, he's depicting this, this pushback against the Ayatollahs by the people of Iran. They're Persian, but the leaders are Arabic. And even the Quran is an Arabic book. And so there's a pushback and there's women who say, we don't want to be Islamicized. We don't want to be colonized by uh, Islam. We want to be free to be Persians and uh, and you know make our our cool looking rugs and and uh, and stuff. No, but so so there's a friend of mine who does these art of the women taking off the hijabs and uh, but just pray that they'll be protected. Those who are who are um, in the face of 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 evil, a global terror. There's leaders there who are doing global terror, pushing horror on people. Pray for the righteous remnant to arise, be empowered with intercession, with the spiritual tools they need for the warfare, which is going not just in Iran, Iraq, uh, it's in Lebanon, uh, Syria, um, everywhere. We got to stand up and pray for the Passover miracles. You know, read Micah chapter. Uh, seven, where it talks about those miracles, those wonders that I showed you coming out of Egypt. I will yet show you my wonders. And I'm talking where the enemy is defeated and God brings the people home and protects us like with the pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud, the manna sustains us. And uh, look what's happened last night. You know, there I was in Khan Yunus and um, I always wanted to help the hostages come home. I didn't know that last night a hostage would come home, Elad Katsir, but he would be dead. Because uh, the videos went out by the Islamic Jihad and it looked like he was alive. The videos were out and he was like, it looked like he was fine, uh, but he was probably killed right after the operation to retrieve his body uh, from that refugee camp. A commando force uh, identified the markers that he was there in Khan Yunus. Uh, and so um, it looked like they poured cement on some bodies, on his body, after they killed him. And uh, so the whole operation, I remember seeing that, that we were in the midst of all this um, busyness and cars and block inside, inside Khan Yunus. And, uh, and so it's a collective force of different aspects, of different commando units. I'm a commando, you know. And so the intel final intelligence arrived. And so after seeing the signs, Maglan goes in by air and the 82nd Battalion uh, and the 7th Brigade of the Paratrooper Patrol. That's the ones we work with a lot. And so they go in and there's there's different fighting, different, uh, you know, shots fired. Um, and they go into this very built up dense area and suddenly... You know, right where the body was supposed to be, there was actually no people defending the body or whatever. And they were able to go and get this body um, of Alad Katsir. And uh, so really, it seems like he was killed in mid-January, already a while ago. Uh, but just the videos were used um, as psychological warfare. And so they were saying he's being held by Hamas, but the Islamic Jihad had him for months. And, and this is painful for the families, you can imagine, because time is running out. That's why you got to keep praying for these hostages. They can't just, they, some of them could be dead. Some estimates say 34 of the 133 now. No, it's not 134 because we just found one. So it's 133 now. And uh, so he was 47 years old. He was taken from, um, I don't remember where he was kidnapped from, but I know his dad was killed, Avraham. His dad was killed. His mother, Hannah, was also kidnapped and had been released. You can imagine a nation just reeling from these heart-wrenching moments. Could we have rescued him? Did we do enough? His sister, Karmit, she wrote in her obituary, Aladi, may your memory be laughter, hugs, and joy, fields and earth. This is not how your story and ours should have ended. Sorry we couldn't save you. I love you forever, Carmen. 
These moments, we just need to hold on to hope. Love you.